I think we're on some kind of elevator. The elevator doors will be securely locked, giving you the safest elevator ride in East Texas. Now close both doors securely so that the outer door latches and then the inner door latches. Have a seat and enjoy your ride. Okay, now that the doors are secure, we're ready to begin. Don't be startled if you get a jolt during descent. Everyone must remain seated until the ride ends. Thank you, and enjoy your ride. I can't wait to see the oil. Well, there's some oil down there. I'll we'll show you just in a minute. We're waiting for some oil. Oh, oh, here they are right now. <clears throat> just a second. Hello. Here in beautiful East Texas, there are lots of interesting things to do and see on top of the ground. Shucks, anybody can see that. So we're going to show you something you won't see anywhere else. I'm Hank. And I'm Professor Rockbottom. And we're going to take you down on a most unusual elevator ride. So take a seat and relax. We're going to show you what's underground in the East Texas oil field. Way, way underground. Whoa! whoa. City sand. You can grow watermelons in it or get your car stuck in it. But in other parts of Texas, it's deep underground and sometimes has oil in it. That's your first lesson in petroleum geology. Like I said, here Queen City sand is on the surface and dry. Except when it rains. <laughs> <laughs> and in Corsicana, it's down deep and may be saturated with oil. Watch the depth gauge. We're going down. Whoa, whoa, steady as she goes. Down, down, stop. Under the Queen City is the Reclaw Formation, greenish sand and clay which acts as a seal between the Queen City and the next layer, the Carrizo Sand. It looks like rock to me. Hey, we're moving. Oh, let's not miss the Carrizo Sands. They're important. Why? Because some folks get their water from the Carrizo Sands. Looks pretty dry to me. That's because the water is in the spaces between the grains of sand. You mean like a bucket that's full of marbles but still holds some water? Yes, that's right. Interesting. Let's go on. Next up, the Wilcox. That's a whole group of formations, isn't it? Yes, but this is only a small part of a thick or deep bed that's made up of sandstone, shales, or clays. That kind of bed sounds like poor sleeping. <laughs> hey, this looks like coal. Yeah, well, you're close. It's lignite, a form of coal. They're mining that stuff not far from here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oil's not the only black gold in East Texas. Let's keep moving. I want to see some oil. <laughs> Going down. Oh, but let's go slower. I need time to think. First we'll be traveling through the rest of the Wilcox. It's thick. I know. And then through hundreds of feet of shale and chalk. Shale is like fine-grained clay that is turned to rock. Lithified, we say. Shale is so, so uh, tight. Yes. Shale is so tight that liquids or gases can't easily pass through it. The shale we're passing through was made 45 million years ago. Uh, give or take a week from money offshore water. You mean Texas used to be covered by an ocean? Yep. The chalk formation, which is also tight, was made from the skeletons of tiny sea creatures. Think about that the next time you run on the blackboard. <laughs> We're passing through the Midway Group, which is an interesting shale just loaded with foreign minifera. Do you have to take shots for that? Foreign minifera? <laughs> <laughs> the foreign minifera are microscopic marine fossils. Some calendar, some ride. Before I show you what's next, here are some drawings of foreign enlarged over 200 times their original size. And just look at that with my wife's big loaf. Uh, right about the place we're passing through now, 65 million years ago, the age of the dinosaur came to an end. Now we're going down from the midway group into the Navarro Shale, but the only way we can tell the difference is that the fossils change. You mean the foraminifera are different? Yeah. All the layers or formations we've seen so far are sedimentary. That means they settle down like grains in a coffee cup. Yeah. Or mud in a creek bottom. Everything we passed was once on the floor of the ocean that covered Texas. Let's stop. I'm tired of thinking. Okay. We've stopped at the bottom edge of the Marlbrook Formation, 2,600 feet down. Well, open the door. Hey, 
I still don't see any oil. Not yet. The Marlbrook is made up of shales, chalks, and chalky shales. Only a geologist would say that. Our next stop is the Cotton Gap. Let's go. That looks like more of the same. Well, it's made up of shales and sands and sandy shales. Here we go again. Can we move on? I'm still looking for oil. So are a lot of other. What's next? Our next stop is one of the most important and very interesting. You're seeing Austin Chalk 3,600 feet underground. But between here and Dallas, it's as deep as 9,000 feet. When you get to Dallas, you can see it right on top of the ground, where it's made into Portland cement. When Austin chalk outcrops on the surface, you can walk in lots of creek beds and find beautiful big macro fossils like these. Ammonites, which old-timers used as doorstops. Now that's a real antique conversation piece. Here in the East Texas oil field, Austin chalk forms a tight, non-permeable seal over the woodbine sandstone. The woodbine sandstone is where the oil is. Well, let's go down and take a look at the oil. Oh, easy now. That should be about deep enough. All right, stop. Wow. Is that it? Yeah. I expected it to flow, ooze, or, or do something. When we talk about a pool of oil, people sometimes think of a swimming pool. You mean it's not the same down here? All this oil is here in reservoir rock, like this woodbine sandstone? Yes. The oil can't pass through the tight Austin chalk above it. Hey, hey, look! Oil is forced into every nook and cranny between the grains of sand. That's right! Because this far down in the earth, it's hot. And the oil is held in the rock under a pressure of about 1,000 pounds per square inch. Oh. Still, the oil is lighter and will float or migrate to the top of the body of water. I didn't know that. <laughs> The oil can't escape because under the water-pressured oil sand, which we call the pay, because it does, <laughs> are the hard, dense, deeper water Washita limestones. Now let's move down a little and see the Washita. It's the bottom of what we call a trap. The Austin chalk is on the top with the oil in between. Hey, it's on an angle. Sure, Hank. That's the direction the field is flowing. And water pressure makes it flow? Yes, down here we have free water pressure. There is such an enormous weight of overburden. All those rocks over our heads. Pressing down on the underground sea beneath the oil that it creates a very high water pressure. And that's why you geologists call our East Texas field a water dry field. That's right. The water is pushing the oil toward the surface and would get there too if it weren't for the Austin chalk. Would you like to go down and see the water that does all that? Work? Not me, Rock Bottom. <gasps> oh, uh, I mean, Professor Rock Bottom. I can't swim. Yeah, okay, then let's take her up. Can we look at the oil once more? Sure, but just for a minute. So that's the woodbine. Hay dirt. No, hay zone. It's not dirt, it's sandstone. It's where the oil is in the East Texas oil field. What's that noise? Oh, 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 they're at it again. Look sure now. They're, they're, you better get out of here. Come on, fast. Where are we going to go? Up to the surface. Come on. Let's go. Step on it. 